exchange debate today. Um, I am a graduate of Sofia University. Um, and, oh, I'm Mariko. Um, then um, let me introduce the debaters for today. Um, Ms. Haruka Matsumoto and Ms. Fumie Ito from Sofia University on the affirmative side. Mr. Tony Liao and Mr. Christopher Gerard. Okay, both sides, are you ready? Yeah. Alright, the chairperson welcomes the first affirmative constructive speech within eight minutes. Shall find companies which break the law. 
is the point shall take necessary adjustments. Convention 3 is the point proper rate of distribution. Why? Companies will follow the law because they don't want to hurt their image. The Tokyo Promise 2007 began no longer high scandals, mainly law violation. Business to collect all information, including that of corporation by the internet's effectively. Therefore, big enterprises put manpower and money to construct compliance. <coughs> Therefore, too, post plan, pay gap will be narrowed. It's empirically proven in European countries. It's noted in 2006. In European countries, the principle of equal pay for equal work is generated and makes no difference whether a man is full time worker or not. In countries where all we get a fair return than the law, the pay gap has been narrowed from 80% level to 90% level. Therefore, three. First impact will be solved. Empirically in Japan, when gap was narrowed, murder and crime decreased. Professor Hasegawa 2005, the decrease of the murder rate by young is a phenomenon which accompanied by the general change of the Japanese society. Post war, Japan became richer and richer by sounding economic growth. Not only that, but also economical gap among people got narrowed. Everyone became rich equally. In that case, people's sense of dissatisfaction and envy became smaller. Moreover, four, second impact will be solved. On balance, in long term, living standard will improve. It's empirically proven in European countries. Part of it, the social was to listen on. We make an exchange of equal pay for equal work among the primary objectives. The EU's internal market has created 225 billion euro in the ever of the EU over 20 years, thereby contributing to rising living standards and employment. Five, third impact will be solved. Improvement of living standard increased consumption and Japanese economy will recover. Economist Takashi six, if normalization of employment is fast, not only the increase of income but also employment will be stabilized. Correspondingly, living anxiety for the future will be somewhat eased and consumer confidence will improve and the radio of consumption will increase. Therefore, improvement of training of non regular workers is expected to be advantageous for Japanese entire economy. Six. It's empirically proven in Holland. The EU of 2000, since the late 1980s, when unemployment in the Netherlands stood at more than 10%, the country has achieved a remarkable economic turnaround. Currently, the unemployment rate is less than 4%. Quite to prove the Dutch began in 1982, companies agreed to make equal not only wage levels for full time and part time workers, but also conditions for hiring. Moreover, 7. Increase of consumption leads to good sales of companies and it increases total wage. Business 2006, the influence on personal consumption by wage and wage cannot be overseen because recovery of personal consumption re will return to popular performance constantly. There will be a circulation that when personal consumption increases, sales of the enterprises also increase and intend to in increase the adoption of wage. 8. Empirically and Holland, the introduction of equal pay for equal work increase the total wage. Professor Hush took us in a calling the boss discrimination on part-time and full-time working and pay a part-time working hour will have to be done in the same as full-time working. The wage growth rate became very gradual since in 1982 and brought a good result in the employment situation very much. That's all. Are you curating questions by the negatives? So your argument is that there are both regular workers and non-regular workers, right? Uh, and are they both e doing the same job? Uh, yes. Are they doing them equally well? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so how do you evaluate how someone is doing their jobs? Uh, so first of all, if there are regular work, if there is a person who works as a regular worker and a non-regular worker, and they go to a uh, house to sell a medicine, and then uh, if, and even if the results are different, for example, if one person can't get a contract and another person cannot get a contract, they still can't get a same, uh, the same wage because the, the fact that they went to the, to the house to sell the medicine is like a job. Okay, so now you can get paid for just going on a trip instead of selling stuff? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so how are companies going to pay for this? If they have to increase the pay of non-regular workers to the equal level of regular workers. Oh. So you mean about the cost? Yeah. Uh, so we. Uh, 
Uh, so we never say that uh, we have to raise the non-regular workers' wage up to the regular workers' wage. So, so you're just going to bring down regular workers' wage and then average the two, right? Okay, so let's talk about consumption then, right? Because you say if you increase some people's money, then they'll spend more, right? Yes. But you're decreasing other people's money, so how does consumption increase? Hmm. Uh, because um, so, uh, uh, because they, these people whose wage were raised can spend money more than this, these people who feel the anxiety, uh, these people who feel the feeling of anxiety for them will be gone. And then, so, um, Wait, but what about the people whose wages just got reduced? Won't their anxiety increase? Uh, we never say. So if I'm a regular worker and I plan my life based on my income, uh, and your plan comes in and maybe reduces out my salary by half every month, won't that make things more unpredictable for me and increase my anxiety and increase uh, my depression? But uh, in in our solvency, we have we say that in in the long term, uh, the total wage will increase because of. Uh, by raising the wage of the, uh, the part-time workers, the consumption will increase, and that will be the profit for the company. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, a lot of Japanese companies export their products, right, to other countries. So how does increasing domestic consumption increase sales internationally? Uh, uh, we never talk about that. So if a lot of companies rely on international demand, uh, why does it matter whether or not Domestically, Japanese people can buy products or not for these companies. Oh, so you're saying that the international market is bigger or affects more than the domestic market? Correct. Yes. Why is that? Well, a lot of Japanese companies rely primarily on exporting products to places other than Japan. Right? Uh, but if the domestic uh, market increases, we can for a certain extent. Uh, Get, uh, expect that the uh, consumption will rise. Right. Will it change the overall projection of a company if 90% of their sales are international?
So let's look to your very first piece of paper, which is the disadvantage. Our disadvantage tells you that the economy is doing better right now if because of consumer confidence increasing and plans going to destroy all that. So subpoint A is the uniqueness. The Japanese economy is recovering right now and business and consumer confidence is increasing, but government support is critical to the turnaround. This is from The Economist, 2009. Markets responded with a shrug, however, partly because there are glimmers of a turnaround. Figures on May 19th revealed that industrial production in March rose by 1.6% from a month earlier. Consumer spirits also improved. The Consumer Confidence Index jumped from 32.4 in April, having increased every month since December's trough of 26.2. Many economists believe the April-June quarter may produce a small recovery, which could gain momentum in the second half of the year. The first pillar of support is government fiscal stimulus, which could amount to about 5% of GDP this year. Subpoint B is the link. The plan will increase labor costs at companies by immediately raising workers' pay. This sudden move will destroy business confidence and consumer confidence. Subpoint C is the impact. Low business confidence causes businesses to invest less and lay people off, which will worsen the economic crisis. This will increase all of their harms tenfold. The crime rate, suicide, depression, unemployment, if they're saying it's bad right now, if you adopt plan, it's going to get a hundred times worse by the end of it all. The next sheet of paper is the counter plan, which we hope will avoid this. Subpoint A is the counter plan text. The Japanese government will mandate that all companies will implement equal pay for equal work over the next five years. Subpoint B is competition. Little one is that it's mutually exclusive. It's impossible for the Japanese government to simultaneously <coughs> mandate equal work for equal pay right now and also phase it in. But our second argument is net benefits. The counter plan avoids the disadvantage because it allows companies to implement equal pay for equal work over time. This increases government predictability for companies and allows companies time to recover from the recession before the new payroll costs. Subpoint C is solvency. One. The solvency for the counter plan is equal to that of the plan as that they both have passed laws and mandate the implementation. So I think we're going to be just fine. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of plan. The next sheet of paper is the topicality. Subpoint A. We think encourage means to offer incentives to an actor to change behavior when they otherwise would not. The key point of this interpretation is that it's always a choice that the company can opt into the system or it can choose not to, but there's no punishment when you encourage someone to do something. Subpoint B is the violation. There is no choice for companies. They might as well be leveling a huge tax against them or doing anything because there's absolutely no choice. The law is a mandate. Subpoint C are the standards, the reason that our interpretation is the best. Very first is because our interpretation preserves ground. If they're allowed to pass laws, we lose out on key grounds such as counterplan or disadvantaged links that are premised on the fact that the, uh, they're only going to encourage instead of mandate. In addition, we lose out on a whole bunch of solvency advocacy in a world where we are missing out on all of those solvency takeouts. Our next standard is predictability. We think there's zero predictability in a world where they can mandate any law they want instead of trying to decide how to best encourage something. Our next is education. We think the debate would be much more educational if we were able to talk about the many ways the government can influence companies to do things that are better for society instead of just straight up mandating them. Our final uh, standard is limits. We think our interpretation to encourage has a very specific limitation on what the government can and cannot do instead of what the affirmative team decided to do, which is outside their limits. Limits should always be preserved because they are key to any reasonable debate. Also, they're fine, which is anti yeah, also, they're just straight up fining them, which is anti-encouraging, right? Like, if they wanted to offer tax incentives, like, we'll give you tax breaks, that's an encouragement. Telling you, we're going to fine you if you don't do what we want is a disincentive. Subpoint to the voters. Our very first voter is induction. Our argument here is that if the plan does not inductively prove the resolution true, then you can never vote for it. But our next argument is more towards the debate, which is competitive equity. We think their interpretation destroys competitive equity, and competitive equity should always be preserved in order to continue the fundamentals of debate. Finally, we would contend that this position is a priori, which means if you agree with this position and they win everything else, then we still win the debate because we need to determine how we are going to debate before we can have the debate itself. Uh, let's go straight to the solvency paper. 
Our very first argument here is that there's never going to be any solvency for the arms because there's still going to be a big wage gap. Sure, people who are doing the same work are going to be getting equal pay for that work, but a CEO is always going to be paid infinitely more than a dock worker, and the dock worker is still going to have this big population gap that they're talking about. Our next argument is that there's no solvency because they don't provide a way to measure work. How exactly does a company compare one vice president to another vice president, one dock worker to another dock worker? How do you do that? In a world where they don't provide the measurement, then there's no way to ever judge that. Our next argument is a term that the way, because plan is so big, it's going to increase discrimination because now companies can just say, oh, well, you're not doing equal work, so we're going to pay you less, even in a world where there's no measurement. Our next argument is going to be a turn, that there's going to be an increase in the murder rate because people are going to be paid less. We'll listen to their evidence that says when people are like depressed, in crime increases. Then in cross-examination, they admit that people are going to be paid a lot less than they are right now. Our next argument is going to be a turn, that there's going to be an increase in depression because people are going to be laid off in order to preserve payrolls. Our next argument is going to be a turn that this is going to decrease production of companies because employees are going to be constantly worried about their jobs, and it's also going to decrease the cohesion of the company, which decreases long-term survivability. Our next argument is that when they keep saying it worked in Holland, it didn't. Our argument is that the pay gap still exists in Holland. This is from Professor Ishima in 2007. European countries have already adopted this policy, and one example is Holland. This policy has been adopted in Holland, and the wage gap between non-regular workers and regular workers has been improved. They tell you in 1982, at least, Holland implemented this, and over the last somewhat 30 years, they still haven't been able to get rid of the wage gap, which means there's never going to be solvency. But our next argument is that when they tell you that Holland, in Holland all wages increased in 1982, remember this was 1982 when all economies were booming. That's definitely alternate causality and they're not proving any way that the plan is going to increase all wages. But our next argument here is that Japan is an export economy, so even if you increase, increase everyone's wages in Japan by a thousand fold, it's still not going to fix the economy because they export 90% of their things and a bunch of the countries that import those goods still don't have any money. Um, I guess that's everything I have, so thank you. Yes, encourage is to offer incentives to an actor to change behavior when they otherwise would not. Yeah, our argument here is that you are not providing a choice to any companies. You are mandating that they have to do it or they will be fined. Yeah, there are four standards, ground, predictability, education, limits. Ah, could you explain one by one? Oh, yeah. For ground, our argument is, is that with your definition of encourage, we lose out on counterplan ground, which would be to actually mandate it, and we also lose out on disadvantage links that say that encourage is never going to be enough, which means you're going to make companies panic. We also lose out on solvency arguments. On predictability, we say we could never predict this type of uh, definition for encourage where you mandate, so you're being unfair. Third, for education, our argument is, is that talking about the way government can influence companies instead of just mandating them is always more educational, thus better for all the participants in the debate and the people watching. And finally, limits that limits should always be preserved in a debate round because it maintains the survivability and the competitiveness of debate. five-year period, and the government will say, in five years, 
you have to have equal work for equal pay. But we are going to let you decide the time frame you want to do that on. You can tell everyone, well, you, you could do plan like you're doing it, where it would be tomorrow our entire company is equal work, equal pay. But what's more likely is that companies under our counter plan will phase it in on what other time frame they want. So if it's going to be really, really dangerous to do it like tomorrow, they can do 10% of workers before the end of the year, then 20% workers in the next year, and 20% of workers in the next year, and 20% of workers in the next year. And I can't do math, so I don't know when we get to 100, but at some point, everyone in five years is equal work for equal pay. And hopefully at that time, the economy is also better, so it doesn't hurt them. So can you explain why it's not Oh, it's pretty topical. We can, we'll defend that topical counterplans are good, but it's, yeah, there aren't a lot of reasons why it's not topical. So that it's not encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> so that we're not encouraged. Also, arguably, we sever out of the immediacy of the, of the resolution. So, like, but it's pretty topical. Uh, you can have this too, by the way. That's a hot gallon show.
that the wage gap cannot, cannot be allowed because it, it is against the idea of equality. Therefore, the, the uh, only company's action is not enough. However, the, uh, by the governmental, governmental action, the, we, we can enjoy the equal rights. Therefore, the, our plan is superior. Therefore, to Disadvantage. So, disadvantage. So, it's a point in this case. But, this point in the area that under the state of school, Japanese economy is recovering. However, my first point is they just see once, once it recovers, never say it, never say this is a tendency. At, at, at least they never put that this tendency will continue. Therefore, my second argument is not to be unique. For supply contention, my second point has to report. Under the status quo, Japanese government justify wage gap between the year and non year employment. Therefore, companies pay to find free co workers who do the same work. Such wage gap create a large proportion of small wage incorporation. So, Japanese economy is in a stagnating tendency because such poor people consume little. This point only hardly prove that tendency, and we can say that their uniqueness is gone. Then, Go to Lisbon. As for Lisbon, point first, on this point, they are the first round. Company is going to be increased. However, my, my third argument is they just assume short term, never assume long term benefits. Therefore, my first argument is no linkage and term. For supply contention three, and some point second, first round, first three, they are clearly narrowed. Therefore, for supply force and fiscal, on balance, giving the standard will improve, and the Japanese depression can be solved. Because by collecting media, consumption will also increase by the improvement of con consumer confidence. Our macros apply sales. Such good economy will result, result in good sales of companies. On this point, only a party assume no plan. Yes, we can say that our plan is rather beneficial for companies. Because even assuming the introduction cost of eco pay for work, finally, companies can get economic benefits. Then go to quotation six. As for the second argument, on this point, we said that the conservancy company cannot measure the same one for so. However, my first argument is that please classify contention and some point first argument. In Japan, over 90% of companies allow wage gap between regular and non regular workers, although they notice that they are doing the same one. But our evidence proved that, that actually, the 90% of the companies. Uh, answers to the question that, that they are paying different wages to the work, to workers who do the same work. Therefore, the, uh, under the status quo, already companies notice that, that who, 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 which worker is doing the same work. Same work. Therefore, the, uh, our is, uh, company can measure. And to supply, uh, uh, my partner's QA time that if the uh, two workers uh, visit to visit home, uh, regardless of the result, they can get the same wage. Therefore, the uh, company can make up. And as for third argument, on this point, they said the time discrimination may increase. However, my first argument is that uh, let me confirm the scenario. The scenario is that the post plan company will not to use ability, not the low ability people. However, my second, um, second argument is not doing it. Of course, of course, even under the status quo, there is the ability gap among workers in the same employment form. Uh, there is the skilled, skilled regular worker and non-skilled regular worker. And non-skilled non-regular worker and skilled non-regular worker. Therefore, the uh, difference in ability is not doing it. Therefore, the, on this point, there their argument is that partial PMA. That's because my next argument is that we can divide gap and discrimination into two types. First one is the discrimination based on workers ability. The second one is the discrimination based on employment form of the worker. However, as I said before, as for the first type of the discrimination, completely not the need. However, if we take a family plan, at least we can solve the second type of the discrimination. Hence, we can say that post plan situation is better. Uh, so, uh, first argument, uh, first two things argument on this point is that uh, murder and depression will occur. However, uh, their reason is that uh, because of the state. However, please cross apply our uh, disadvantage argument. And that uh, first term, firstly, wage gap will be narrowed and it increased the consumer confidence and it increased the uh, consumption and it will be result in the Japanese food economy. Therefore, the food economy is better. I'm 
sorry? Whatever I can say wrong, I'm sorry. You want to say that right? Whatever I can say wrong. Oh. Okay. Is this the DA? Card, the cards around the DA? The disadvantage? Not tough okay. Awesome. This is tough cal. Okay. Can you see the disadvantage cards too? Or? Uh, we just explained that. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, Did you read the card? I don't think no, those cards okay. are any. Why is the why is it coming down? Oh, okay. Right. All right, ready? Are you ready for process? Okay. So let's talk about your counterinterpretation on the topicality. Your counterinterpretation is uh, encourages to make someone more likely to do something or make something more likely to happen. Explain how when you mandate that you are encourage anything. You're not making something more likely to do something. You're demanding that it happens or else, right? Uh, firstly, the type of government make law that companies have to follow the principle of equal pay for equal work. Then, please close up by potential see. It's a point faster. Company will follow the law because they don't want to have to do it. Therefore, we can say that if the government makes law, it will, it, it is the, to, it is to give incentive to companies to introduce equal work because the, uh, in Japan, companies uh, companies will, will follow the law. Hence, the making law is to uh, to give incentive to companies. Would you say all companies follow laws? Like if there's a law in the books, companies are going to follow it, right? Mm, if 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 a uh, if a company is not but uh, if a company is not caring about their identity. They might break the law. However, Everyone cares is. about their identity though, right? I mean, every corporation, every company wants to look good, right? Yes. Right. So wouldn't you say with that analysis and in the analysis on your first card on solvency that all companies follow all laws because they want to look good? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if all companies follow all laws, then you're not encouraging. You're mandating, right? <laughs> All right. Let's, let's talk about the counterpoint for a little bit. Okay. Actually, I want to go to solvency if that's okay. So on here, you make the argument that uh, there isn't going to be a wage gap anymore because 90% of people are, like all these 90% of companies that have wage gaps, it's going to go away, right? In your plan, there is not going to be any wage gaps anymore, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, will the president of Sony make as much as the person who's selling the PSP? Yes or no? Okay, will the president of Sony, the very top man or woman, make as much as the person selling a PSP? Right, it wouldn't happen, right? Is that time? We'll go by yours. Okay, I've got 30 seconds left. Um, because there's still going to be a wage gap, right? Because the CEO is going to make billions of yen, and the PSP guy is going to make like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> 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 because the job is to, to organize the entire Sony, Sony company. However, as for salesman, they, their job is only to Okay. okay, but there's still a wage difference, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, we're ready. So the order is going to be uh, topicality, uh, then to the counter plan, and then to the disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So on topicality, our story is that encourage has to mean increasing positive incentives to induce companies to do something. Now, their counterinterpretation is to make companies more likely to implement this. And this is an interesting term, because more likely implies that actions happen on degrees, right? There's absolute, and then there's not at all. And you can make something more likely. However, what their plan does is to make it absolutely necessary that companies do this plan, which is not encouraging. That is to mandate something which is distinct. Some does not mean the same as all. So increasing some doesn't mean increasing all. There's a big difference here in what encourage means. And this, uh, this, and this means that they are not topical. Now what does this mean for the negative? Well, it means a few things. First, it destroys our counterplan ground. Because the debate should be about whether or not companies, whether or not the government should have to encourage uh, companies to do so, or whether or not they can mandate it. Or, the de and the debate should be about what way they encourage companies, whether they give tax breaks, whether they uh, give subsidies to companies to pay for these people, whether there's an opt-in or an opt-out system. And so this critical debate is the, where the solvency debate lies and where the disadvantage and counterplan debate lies in between the affirmative and the negative. And when they make it absolutely a mandate that companies have to do this, this hurts our solvency ground, and it, and it hurts our counterplan ground, because they can essentially uh, mandate or fiat that their solvency happens, that companies will do equal pay, equal work, which is, the, which is the antithesis of encourage. And it's made worse by the fact that their mechanism for encouraging companies is to fine them if they don't do it, which means the me mechanism is a negative incentive, not a positive incentive. It is a negative punishment for companies. And so for all these reasons, we think that they hurt the predictability of the debate, and they don't answer the voting issues, which is that topicality is a priority, and that it's key to preserve competitive equity in fair affirmative and fair negative ground, which is more important than the actual debate itself, and so that issue come first as a voting issue. But now, having said that, I would like to move on to the counterplan. Their first argument is that topic, our counterplan is topical. Well, look, the interpretation of counterplan ground and, and how we view counterplans is that topical counterplans are good and that it's not topical. First is that once the affirmative gets to pick their plan, they have to defend their plan and only the plan. This means that they cede the rest of the ground to the negative. Once they pick theirs, the rest of it becomes negative. So there's no such thing as a topical counterplan. This is also evidenced by the fact that we're having a debate about topicality, uh, about what is or isn't topical which means that there's no way to determine what a topical counterplan would be. We would argue that if we win topicality, that they're not encouraging, the counterplan also doesn't encourage, so neither of us meets the rest of the But even if you think our, our counterplan is topical, we're going to explain that this, this, this model for evaluating uh, competition is best for education for a few reasons. The first is that it's most real world for education. Now, when you have a debate in the Diet or in Congress, uh, and a, someone proposes a plan, and someone else changes something about that plan, the, the first person can't say, hey, you stole my idea, therefore you should lose, right? They have to say why that thing that is different is better or worse or really important about their plan. Otherwise, their plan doesn't get implemented, the other plan gets implemented. And so it's better for education in that sense, and that in increases the level of comparative debate that needs to go on, which is critical for real world training and education. The second reason why it's better is that it increases strategic decision making. Now, affirmatives have to make strategic decisions about what to include in their plan if they have to defend all parts of it. And so this will increase plan writing, increase thinking, and increase the level of depth that we go through in debate, which is the reason why we have debates, is to go in depth on these critical topics. And on the negative side, it increases strategic decision making because they now get to choose, after the affirmative has chosen, the ways in which they want to attack and isolate the things that they think are good and bad about the affirmative plan. So it increases the level of critical thinking that is necessary, which is a, another important skill that debate has. And so uh, the, the last reason we think, uh, is, uh, the last argument that I'm going to make is that even if you think that our counterplan is topical, that's a reason to reject the counterplan, not a reason to reject the negative. And so even if they win that it's bad for whatever reason, you could just say, OK, counterplan, throw it away. But you could still look to the disadvantage as a reason to vote negative. 
So let's talk about their uh, actual arguments on account of that. They first say that uh, there's no proof that five years is enough. But one, we think there is. Uh, five years allows business people to decide when the best time is to implement equal work, equal pay, based on the economy. And our uniqueness evidence indicates that the economy is getting a little better. So maybe in a couple years they can say, let's do it for 50% of our company. And then in four years they can say, let's do it for the rest of it. And even if five years is enough, it's still better than doing it immediately. And so five years provides a buffer zone for companies to say, here's when we're going to do it, and here's when we're not going to do it. And it's more predictable this way because you can tell companies that they have this period of time. They also say that uh, equal pay for equal work right now is better because it saves more people sooner. But we submit to you that it's not better if companies simply cannot do it. If companies can't do it right now, which our solvency evidence talks about, that it will increase labor costs or it will decrease workers' salaries, or regular workers' salaries, or that there will be increasing pay for the same, the same work but there's no way to evaluate work, you can't do it right away, right? If, if work isn't tied to productivity, then you're paying a bunch of people the same for not doing the same level of work, which is what the affirmative plan says. And so these are all reasons why companies may not be able to do it right away, and that the counter plan would be better to transition towards. Now, they lastly say that it's key to human rights, uh, but we submit that the counter plan takes the same signal that equal work and equal pay is a standard that the government should adhere to. Now, let's to move on to the discipline. They say that the economy, the story on the disadvantage is pretty simple. The economy is slowly getting better, but what this plan does is it shocks companies by having an immediate policy that they have to implement that's different than every other policy that's ever happened in Japanese history, right? This is how Japanese companies work, and now the government, instead of supporting companies, is sanctioning companies. And so now companies get freaked out, CEOs get freaked out, and they say, what's the, what's the government going to do next to us? What are they going to make us do next, and what do we have to adhere to right away? When this happens, Business confidence comes down, companies invest less, companies take less risk, companies do less in research development, and companies have to increase their labor costs, which decreases their profit everywhere. And in a, in a fragile, growing economy, this is the worst thing you could do. What you need to do is say, companies, you should do this, but over a period of time, like five years, and so this will prevent the shock that will happen with the affirmative plan. Now, their first argument is that the economy isn't recovering now. First, they don't have any evidence of this. Our evidence is uh, specific about key manufacturing industries and key technological industries, and it's saying that government stimulus to these companies is what's, a uh, what's spurring the surge, and it's predictive of the long term that it will continue to get better. So we still have uniqueness that it is getting, uh, getting better. They also say that they'll increase living standards, but look, this is all being argued on the solvency debate, which is that they're paying people to do things that aren't being productive, and also that they might be increasing consumption of one group of people, but decreasing consumption of the other group of people, so there's no on-net increase in consumption, and it doesn't help companies that way. Five years isn't, may not be the best, but it's better than right now. Here's how our company is going to go, okay? And so, if in the middle of the season they've already budgeted, they've already set their budget, and now the Japanese government says, you know, everything that you planned for, you have to do something else now. Companies get really freaked out about this, and they say, whoa, what, what's happening? You were supporting us, and now you're fining us. You were supporting the way we do things, and now you say we have to change everything overnight. And companies, when they get freaked out, 
They invest in, the, in areas less. They build fewer factories. They employ fewer workers. They kind of withdraw if their level of confidence in the government and the market goes down. is that uh, affirmatives choose the ground that they defend, right? You get to choose a plan, you get to choose those mandates. Now, if we, after that point, you've chosen what you're willing to defend, then the rest of the ground becomes negative ground. And we think that this model is best for education for a few reasons. The first being that it allows for comparative debates about issues of the plan and the counter plan. Uh, like my example of the diet, right? Uh, uh, the issue of when to implement things like time is important, like we're, we're seeing right now. Five years, 10 years, immediately, that's an important question. And so it's not whether it's topical or not, it's what the best policy is at the moment. The second reason why it's good is that it increased strategic decision making amongst both affirmatives and negative teams. You have to be more careful and thoughtful about writing your plan. We get more strategy and more ideas and get to be more creative about how we attack it. And then the third reason is that there's no such thing as a topical counter plan, because topicality is something that you negotiate, right? So if we win that encourage isn't to mandate, and then you're not topical, and we're not topical either, right? But you don't look to topicality to see what arguments we can and can't run, is our point. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody ready? All right. Oh, sorry. Quick roadmap. I'm going to do overview that you should flow on case, underview that you should also flow. And by on case, I mean pretty much exclusively solvency that shell. Okay. As the first speaker of the calls, I want to give a quick overview why the negative is winning today's debate round. The very first reason is topicality. If you looked at all of Tony's arguments, you can very clearly see that we win. Given the a priori voter there, you're going to vote instantly on that, and that's going to be the debate. But if you don't believe in topicality, or you'd rather look at the meat of the debate, then the second reason you're going to vote for us is that there's absolutely no offense on the disadvantage, which means there's always a risk that it happens. And in a world where even there's a 1% risk that the disadvantage occurs and the economy gets worse, then we're always going to outweigh the case, which is predicated on the fact that the economy gets better. Our next argument, the third reason we're winning, is that the counter plan hijacks any possible benefit from case. So long as you don't vote with the theoretical block that doesn't have voters on it, then the counter plan is always going to co-op case. But the fourth reason you're going to prefer us is what I'm about to talk about in the meat of the speech, is that the case doesn't garner any solvency, which means you're always going to prefer us. I'd like to start with a couple extensions. I want to note first, the first argument I make is that there's absolutely no solvency here because there's going to be a big wage gap. They argue that in Japan, over 90% of companies allow wage discrimination, that if two workers do the same job, they'll get the same pay. But they never answer that the wage gap is more than just work, that like equal work for equal pay. CEOs are always going to make more money than people who sell PSPs, and there are always going to be way more people who sell PSPs than CEOs, which means there's always going to be this gap that they are talking about where a few people are really rich and a lot of people are really poor. In a world where that wage gap will always exist and where the plan doesn't solve it, it totally takes out their first impact and their fourth impact. The first impact which says that income gap increase 
crime and death rate because it ruins the face of society. If you can't solve for that income gap, then that is never going to work. But also, they tell you that um, the human right, that the Japanese government should correct the wage gap because it disobeys the idea of equality. Again, they're never solving for that impact, which means you're taking those two entirely out. Now, let's go down to my fifth, sixth, and seventh argument, which tell you that the economy is going to be much worse because businesses are going to go out of business because they can't afford the cost of payroll. The other one that says there's going to be a decrease in production because employees are going to be very, very worried and there's going to be a decrease in cohesion. Also, that there's going to be an increase in this economic depression because people are going to be really going to get fired. In a world where we are winning these turns and they don't answer them, it takes out their second and third impact, that many working poor die from hunger. If you are fired and unemployed, you are going to be either working poor or just poor, but you will still die. And the third, that the depression increases jobless, suicide, and so on, that the depression will get worse, which means these things get worse. In a world where we're winning these turns, all that means is that all of their impacts are taken out, but they can never solve for them. Additionally, remember how we're winning the evidence that said the wage gap was never solved in Holland, which again shows that their type of plan will never be able to solve for the harms that they try to isolate. Additionally, remember, okay, so those are the extensions I want. Go to the underview now. There are two different philosophies you can use to judge this debate, and we're winning both of them. The very first is stock issues, right? In a stock issues paradigm, you look to the inherency, harms, and solvency, and the topicality of the case. We are winning that case is not topical, and we're also winning that there uh, is no solvency. In this world, you're always going to pro prefer the negative. Additionally, the second way that you could use to judge this debate is through a net benefits paradigm, where you have to decide if case provides more good or more harm than the counterplan or the status quo. In a world where we are winning all of these turns that say it's going to increase discrimination, increase the murder rate, increase depression, increase companies going out of sales, decrease production, which means employees will be laid off and they will be depressed, all of these things prove that it's always going to be worse for Japan if you adopt plan. In this world, I think you should pick the negative. Thank you very much. Preparation time for the
got human right piece of my brain. Uh, and then as for place for the disadvantage, uh, as for uh, as for disadvantage, uh, they uh, firstly they said that the labor cost will increase or so. However, place cost of life carry time that the uh, uh, if, if the if we raise the non regular workers' wage, we could just over the regular workers wage and so uh, first of all there is no more uh, labor cost problem and uh, they said that uh, about uniquely in Japan however uh, they never have evidence that uh, uh, in Japan these uh, destroying confidence uniquely happens or so and however at least the family has cross supply case side of uh, uh, extend my partner's uh, DA of, 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 of Using the case side argument uh, that uh, uh, if we increase in the non regular workers' wage, uh, we, uh, the consumption will increase and the economy will become better. And uh, even if we want lower than regular workers' wage, uh, in long term, uh, total wage will increase. Uh, therefore, taking our plan is on balance better. And then please go to sol solvency. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, they, they use the example of CEO and home with PSP. However, they totally misunderstand our scenario. Uh, our scenario is cross apply our day time that uh, the two sellers who go to the house. And if it is the CEO and the PSP seller, they of course they never do the same work. The CEO never sells the PSPs in the shops. Uh, therefore, uh, the, those uh, that is not what we are talking about. And so you should not take their argument. And moreover, uh, uh, please keep in mind that our solvency comes from that, not from the fact that the gap uh, totally goes away, but from the from the fact that the uh, gap will be narrow. Uh, so therefore, all uh, please extend confidential uh, uh, the uh, four to seven argument. Uh, and moreover, please extend my uh, partner's uh, first argument. Uh, under the status quo, already companies know which workers do the same work. So the companies know that the CEO and seller, the sellers who sell PSP are different. Uh, and moreover, please extend their, uh, my partner's second argument that post plan uh, uh, under the status quo, they are skilled workers and non skilled workers. Therefore, as for their time, it is just a partial PMA. And moreover, please. Uh, and moreover, as for their tongue of the murder argument, uh, please extend the primary argument, uh, uh, cross apply this argument, disadvantage argument. Uh, thank you. Sometimes they do. So, my order is going to be topicality, the counter plan, the disadvantage, and the solvency. Now, I'm not going to go for topicality except to say that there's a debate about which interpretation is better and what topicality is, which is a reason why you shouldn't look to topicality to determine what arguments the affirmative and negative can or can't run, because those boundaries are fluid. But now let's start to go to the counterplay. They say that uh, they can still have a good policy debate without uh, topical counterplans. And we agree, except that topical counterplans allows for the same debate because we still have to win our disadvantage and win our case arguments. What topical counterplans do is it increases education on a different level, uh, which is that it increases research. Now they say that it limits research because it minimizes the debate to a small thing. But first, the affirmative should have to defend that. If they say it in their plan, they should have to defend that, which increases argumentative responsibility. The other thing is that it increases research for both the affirmative and the negative, because the affirmative has to be more specific about their plan, the negative has to be more strategic, or can be more strategic, about the ways they choose to attack the plan. 
And they also don't answer how it increases strategy, which, is, which uh, forces the increase in research, because you have different ways to think about it. And finally, this all leads to an increase in critical thinking education, which is the purpose of debate, and which is what trains us to be real-world policy makers and decision makers that make decisions between policies that are kind of the same to solve a similar problem, except for the critical difference. Uh, between them, and it increases the level of comparative debate, which are all reasons why topical counterclaims are good, uh, and, it, and we can still have the debate about the dissent of the case and, and, and a resolutional focus. So there's no reason why topical counterclaims are bad. There's no voting. There's also no voting issue on this, so even if you think the topical counterclaims are bad, you could just reject the counterclaim and then still vote on the dissent and the case. So their next argument is that we don't prove that five years is enough. But first of all, we don't need to, because five years will still be better than immediately. And the second reason is that five years will be more predictable, which is all we need to win for our disadvantage. So the counterplay doesn't link to the disadvantage, because it's more predictable than immediately and shocking the, shocking the corporations, which is why five years may not be enough for all companies to do it, but it's still comparatively better. And we argue that it is enough, because the economy will be getting better uh, in the uh, upcoming years. They say that many people will die, but first of all, they have, I mean, you have to weigh the advantages and disadvantages of companies potentially going bankrupt, companies' business confidence going down, uh, consumer confidence going down, regular workers having their wages reduced, and these are all immediate impacts that will happen with the plan, whereas the counter plan will gradually phase this in and make it more likely that there's fewer working poor, and so we solve the same impact, but it's just a question of, you know, immediately or in five years, which means that you should do it in five years to avoid all the bad negative consequences of the disadvantage in the case, and we'll still solve for the same people, although it's maybe not just right away. And we'll solve better if more companies can implement the policy uh, over a long period of time. And so on net, more companies will be doing better, and fewer people will die. And then they say human rights, but look, human rights isn't a factor here because the counter plan sends the same signal that there should be equal work and equal pay as the plan. And so there's no reason to prefer the plan for the reason of human rights. Now let's talk about the disadvantage. Their first argument is that they'll just, there won't be an increase in labor costs because they'll just decrease regular workers' pay. Well, first of all, this means that they don't solve and make things work for companies because it reduces productivity of all the regular workers because you reduce their salary. And then it leads to an increase of the suicide and the murder they talk about if, if regular workers have their salaries cut down. And then it, it decreases productivity because it's not tied to productivity anymore. So there's, you might be doing the same work, but you might not be doing the same quality of work. Like even in their example, when two people go to a house and one person sells something and the other person doesn't, the company has to pay them the same thing, which is what's going to drive up their labor costs if they pay more for unproductive workers. And so, and, and then the fourth reason is that even if this happens, it doesn't answer why companies will be shocked by this policy, that they have to change their pay scale, which is what our link comes from. Companies being shocked, companies' business confidence goes down. So we don't have to win an increase in labor costs, although there will be one. We just have to win that this is really unpredictable for companies and that they'll go down to win our link. They say cross-apply the case uh, and that consumption will increase, but I think we need to talk about this for a second. If they're just reducing regular workers' pay and increasing other people's pay, there won't be an on-net increase in consumption. And then the second thing, which my partner Chris talked about on case, is that it doesn't matter uh, if domestic consumption increases a little bit, it matters whether international export economy, uh, demand increases, which means that they don't help companies at all. They only risk hurting companies uh, by shocking them, reducing investments, reducing research and development, uh, and, making, and, and increasing labor costs for paying for unproductive workers. What this will do is it will bring down the Japanese economy uh, as companies might have to go bankrupt, companies will invest less, and it'll be worse for everyone if companies have to lay people off but have to suffer from uh, economic downturn even worse than it already is. It's just getting a little bit better. And so the counter plan is the best policy option for these reasons because it avoids the disadvantage of the Japanese economy losing business confidence and going bankrupt. Thank you. No preparation. Thank you. Thank you.
prefer counter plan is bad because that uh, on this point they say that uh, we have to uh, how do you have and uh, how you can decide uh, can we decide you know, so have a no inherency even even there is no tropical counter plan uh, how do you choose cap uh, choose their plan carefully yeah now uh, my page extends second argument plan tropical uh, counter plan is is especially bad because the uh, negative can pre present almost the same plan counter plan as as the plan uh, how and and we just have to focus on only defined, uh, on, on this small defined. Therefore, that as for counterpart is what's there. As for the demonage, uh, please extend my counter argument. No, uh, no proof that five years is enough to avoid this advantage. Therefore, that, uh, they, on this point, they say that uh, five years is good, better than immediately. However, that uh, please confirm our plan. Our plan may flow and the company will follow the law. Then uh, our plan, plan just may flow. And some, um, if, and of course, that law making will take time. Therefore, that uh, if, if the company is know that government is tackling on making plan such as the uh, such as the eliminating the the gap. Uh, the companies can presume that government is uh, in 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 a few years the company will, will make law that is that uh, to to uh, to introduce equal pay for work. Therefore, that, uh, um, of course, the making law will take time. Therefore, uh, company can presume governmental, uh, governmental action. Therefore, uh, uh, their counter plan is not severe because company can presume that then physics and not my uh, next argument that uh, uh, their counter plan is inferior because the, and because the, if, if we take a company plan, we can help, help People sooner, however, please explain. Ah, then, on um, this point, is it? Ah, ah. And then, go to the disadvantage. Yes, yeah, so for disadvantage, the yeah, disadvantage being based on com the com company situation. Ah, uh, then, however, the phase extend to my. To AC argument that is a post plan, first the gap will be narrowed, then answer that uh, in this process, the company's cost will never increase because uh, our plan, our plan, by our plan, companies can choose whether they they set regular workers, uh, non regular workers base equal to regular workers base, or, or they can choose the, to reduce regular workers base and uh, increase non regular workers base. Therefore, that in this process, that if if companies care about the cost, they, they don't, they uh, not necessarily have to increase the wage of, only increase the wage of non regular workers. Therefore, in this process, cost will never increase. And therefore, that please extend my next argument. Uh, for plan such, because of the such elimination of the gap, the consumer confidence will improve. This means that the under the status quo, uh, poor people have the, have the, have the idea that they, they are inferior to some rich people. Therefore, they cannot consume because the, uh, they, are, they have the anxiety about their future. However, for some such, uh, because of the equality, they will start to consume. Therefore, the, uh, we assume that her people's Therefore, as for the company, cost will never increase. And all, all, only the companies assume that uh, people's perception who start to function. Therefore, please, please, please.